Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney will be in one of the meetings with the president and North Korean officials. Kim and President Trump are expected to meet privately at some point. Now a look at some other stories you need to know this morning. The city of New Orleans looks like it is ready to move forward with a plan to house dozens of inmates with mental health issues. Maryland it's April. Investors are seeing a good start to the week on Wall Street. The Dow closed up 60 points. The NASDAQ gained 26 and the S&P 500 was up three. Stocks jumped on news from President Trump that he plans to hold off on raising tariffs on Chinese goods. The president also announced he will be inviting Chinese President Xi Jinping to his Mar-a-Lago estate for a signing ceremony if both sides can come to a deal. Well, tax refunds are shrinking. According to IRS data, refunds are down more than $500 on average this year. The amount of people receiving refunds is also shrinking, down more than 26% as of mid-February. But experts caution that IRS data can swing sharply week to week. Plastic is contained in almost every product that we buy. Much of it is that single-use plastic, which ends up getting tossed. But now there's a major effort to change that with the zero waste movement. Packaging accounts for nearly 15 million tons of plastic created every year, and most of it ends up in landfills or the ocean. This shop, though, where customers bring their own containers, is just one of the many zero waste stores popping up around the nation that's trying to change that. Well, I love it, and I like buying things um, package-free, so that's really big for me. We're just really trying to make a little less trash in the world. And big businesses are taking note. Coke, Procter & Gamble, and several other corporations are starting an initiative called Loop. 25 companies will sell certain products in glass and other containers that can be reused. Well, we've all been to Walmart before and before. That is very interesting. I've always wondered why they do that. And every single time it makes me nervous because I'm like, what if they forgot to bring something up? Every single time. Well, usually it's a problem for me because I always get like the big bundle stuff, like the paper towels or the yeah. toilet tissue that never fits in the paper in the plastic bag. Right. So it's kind of like, ooh, like you mentioned, I always put it in my pocket, then I got to Sure, then you have to dig it back out. Now there's 20 people behind you. You're holding up people. Uh, I feel like there has a, to be a better way to do this? There needs to be a better way, but who are we? For now, that's what we got to do. Mm -hmm. Guys, if you have a story you want us to verify, let us know on social media or send us an email to verify at www.tv.com. I think the helpful thing to know is that you don't have to do it, but I uh, feel like for now it's going to cause more complications. Yeah. Why would you be mean to the Walmart greeter, Dave? <laughs> right? No. You just give them the receipt, <laughs> say thank it. you for checking it, and keep it moving. That's, an, that's their job. Thanks, April. In health news this morning, a new study says that genetics may play a role in whether you have trouble sleeping. Yeah, Dutch researchers compared the DNA of about a million and a half people using at-home genetic tests, and they identified 956 genes, including some inside brain cells that people with insomnia have in common. Scientists also found those specific genes have a strong similarity to genes contributing to depression and anxiety. And new research finds that your eating regimen may determine weight loss success, and it begins on a molecular level. According to the study, fat cells have a circadian rhythm which could affect metabolic processes. That means your own personal schedule could impact weight loss and gain. Some people wrap up their sleep cycles in the morning while two-thirds are night owls. But if you disrupt any of that, you could gain weight. And guys, it looks like the Tooth Fairy is paying a lot less for teeth these days. According to Delta Dental, the Tooth Fairy dropped about $3.70 per tooth last year. So that's a 43% drop from the year before. And there's a couple of explanations for this. Sometimes kids get less money if they've lost a few teeth already. And listen to this, Duke. Mm. Some teeth are more valuable than others. Really? I've never heard that one. Interesting. This year marks the second straight decline in cash that kids received when a tooth fell out. In 2016, the average was $4.66 which is below your level. <laughs> Let's, I'm so glad you're here for this story. Thank so you, you got $5 a tooth. Well, $5 when I lost my big, like, you know, my, my big front teeth. So wait, you did have different values for different teeth. Different values, but for the most part, I, it was on the average about five. Now, when I lost my wisdom teeth, that's when, but the baby wisdom teeth in the back, the chompers. You didn't have to get those pulled out. Well, I did, but the, the first baby, the baby wisdom, as I call them. Oh, okay. The baby wisdoms, when they fell out, <laughs> that's when I got like a dollar.
Okay, you know what? <laughs> I just needed to come to your house. 720 now, guys. February is National Heart Month, and in the next half hour, we're talking about cholesterol. Yeah, a cardiologist with Ashna Health Center will be with us to explain why those cholesterol checks are so important. Well, I'm gonna do all Good morning. Time now, almost 7.30. Thank you for joining us on the Eyewitness News for this Tuesday. February 26. That's right, and Duke Carter hanging out with us. Hello. Eric is under the weather, and so is Leslie today. And I know Eric would have wanted to stay with us. Yeah. He came in for a little bit because it's Fats Domino's birthday. They had such a special relationship. Yes, they did. Fats would have turned 91 years old today. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. We've covered many stories. Of course, this is a New Orleans icon. Many people love the songs. Oh, my goodness. We love his music. Yeah. And that's how we're remembering him this morning. Yeah, you're right. All right, but now it's time to get over to Dave. Unfortunately, today is the day we start watching the rain, and this lasts for the next week, leading into to Mardi Gras. Well, this month, the CDC revised a plan to end the HIV epidemic here in America, working hands-on in communities that carry the heaviest HIV burden. Yeah, the plan focuses on working with state and local health departments to make an impact. Megan Key is live at University Medical Center. And Megan, you talked to a professor about the HIV impact, specifically on the African-American community. Yeah, you're exactly right, Duke. I did. I spoke with an assistant professor at the U. Oh. That's how you kick off the 8 o'clock hour, right? That is how you do it, the Bucktown All-Stars. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Eyewitness Morning News on this Tuesday, February 26th. Leslie and Eric are under the weather, but Duke Carter has stepped in to keep the Hi. party going, so I have someone to dance with this morning. It was good. That was a good uh, opening opening number. That's oh, very good. It was good. great. The last hour of the show is going to be amazing, guys. We have more music from the Bucktown All-Stars. Yes. They <laughs> well, I thought we were awake this morning. Wow. Hey, guys, they are getting us ready for the wonderful <laughs> Samedi Gras. It's going to be fun. Plus, the chef Kevin Belton is making a great parade root dish, fried chicken. Great band, great food. No, Eric. Whoa! Oh, no, that's not oh, that's that is that is not right. You know that man well, doesn't brother. feel Get well. Get well, brother. I'm sorry. You know <laughs> I love you. That's you know I love low, you. Chef Kev. Even I have pity on him. <laughs> <laughs> but we feel you. All right. Especially when you're bringing small kids to the parades, safety, guys, is always on your mind during mm -hmm. Mardi Gras. So Crime Stoppers will have some tips to help you prepare your kids. And speaking of kids, a sibling rivalry is hard to avoid, but there are ways as parents that you can help your kids build healthy sibling relationships. We'll have more on that coming up later in the show. All right, all that's coming up, but first we want to check in on today's news. And this morning, we're learning more about that 36-year-old victim in the Bourbon Street shooting from this weekend. Yeah, Julia Cuvion was a mother and a nurse who was loved by many. Police and city leaders have responded with kind words for Cuvion and her family. Yeah, WWL TV actually exclusively spoke with Mayor Cantrell after the latest shooting on Bourbon Street. Cantrell said in our interview, it was one of the hardest phone calls that she ever had to mm -hmm. make, speaking to Kubion's family, specifically her parents, and learning that the victim had a 19-year-old daughter. Friends say it was a rare night out for Kuvion on Sunday morning at around 3.15 on Bourbon Street when she was shot and killed. Now, according to reports, the suspect, Lewis Barnes, was selling drugs when a guard at Willie's Chicken Shack noticed, that he, what, noticed what he was doing and tried to stop him. That's when the scuffle started, which unfortunately led to the nurse being shot. I have expressed not only my condolences to the entire family, but just um, our ability as a city to just wrap you know, our arms around the family, not just now, but, but for the long haul. Now, Barnes was jailed later Sunday on counts of second-degree murder and attempted second-degree murder. President Duff. And Demian is ready to roll with more than 3,000 mass revelers and 36 numbered floats under the theme, 
Wonder Tales of Science Fiction. So this morning we've got Daryl Dawkin, the Vice President of Endymion, to talk about all of the fun and Kenny Kurth from the Bucktown All-Stars who are performing at the big Samedi Gras Festival Saturday. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, how are you? So talk to us, the Wonder Tales of Science Fiction. How did we get to that theme? Well, we have some consultants that's helped us with the theme and, mm -hmm. it, and it allowed us to create some incredible floats this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they go back to uh, shows and silent films back into the 1800s and 1900s. So, mm -hmm. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, War of the Worlds, I mean, it's a variety of things that'll really talked about the future way back then. And of course, with Endymion, there's gonna be a tons of LED lights, big display. Absolutely, every year we've enhanced the LED lighting. We can change the colors of the entire float throughout the parade nice. to match the theme of the float. So we're quite excited about that. And we have Flo Rida as the Grand Marshal. How did that Absolutely. happen? Absolutely. Flo, well, he came a couple years ago mm -hmm. and performed at the Superdome and uh, did a phenomenal job mm -hmm. and was so excited. It was excited to come back. So not only are we having him back at the extravaganza this year, he's going to be our Grand Marshal. So How does it feel having Flo Rida? I mean, because apparently there's history. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, and we're hoping he gets on stage at the Somni Grand Festival. Two years ago when he was here, he did. And we got to play with him. And he. Yeah. he tore the place down mm -hmm. at Somni Gras. He, he, was, he had a group with him. They were just loved every minute of it. They had their phones out taking pictures of everything going on. They were videoing it. They, he just loved well, it. Well, you know, New Orleans loves people that have a good time, and he had a good time when he came. And, of course, a good time is Saturday. We have the Somni Gras Festival. Talk to us about that. So we've been doing this for, I uh, guess, well over 10 years now. But Bucktown also have had a real great relationship with the super crew of Endymion. <laughs> and, uh, and we've done everything Endymion has had to offer. We've been on a float before. We've been at the extravaganza. We closed for Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yes. I think we took the stage one night at 4.30. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, we've yep. been at the, the Coronation Ball, the Beans and Jeans, but the Somni Gras Festival mm -hmm. is incredible. It's, it's like Frank used to say, naturally New Orleans. I mean, you got tens of thousands of people mm -hmm. of all race, creed, color, religion, everything on the neutral ground, on the sidewalk, just having fun. It doesn't cost anything to come out there. It's all local bands playing on the stage, and it's just local people having a great time at a best, parade. He's our best salesman. He's a good pitch. He made a good pitch. And again, tell us what time. because It we're starts at noon, mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, and we have Groovy 7, Top Cats, and then closing it out with the Bucktown All-Stars and the introduction of our Grand Marshal about 3 o'clock. All right. Well, I appreciate y'all being here this morning. Of Can't course, wait. you have it turned up this morning with the visa. <laughs> we appreciate that. Thank you for being here as well. Remember, the Sam de Graaf Festival is this Saturday starting at noon, featuring, as we just heard, Groovy 7, the Top Cats, and the Bucktown All-Stars. That's on Orleans oh, Avenue oh, at Olympia oh, Street. And the parade rolls at 415. Then the Endymion Extravaganza opens its doors at 630 that night at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. For more information about all of the fun, log on to WWLTV.com and click on links. Sheba? All right, sounds like so much fun, Duke. And